My name is Stephanie and I'm one of the librarians at Robbins Library. Welcome to Folk Tales from the continent of Africa. Let's start with our usual story time opening, getting our body warmed up. We're going to sing Hello Friends. Do you remember the words and the hand signs? This is hello and hand signs. And to say the word friends, you curl your pointers once, twice. The rest is pretty easy. Ready? Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello one more time. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Okay, good job. Our first story is from the country of Tanzania. And it's called Rhinos for Lunch and Elephants for Supper. Tanzania is on the east coast of Africa, just south of Kenya. And um, this is a fun story. It's, um, it's told by Tololwa Molel, who's a Tanzanian storyteller. And it's illustrated by Barbara Spurl. Spurl. <laughs> Rhinos for Lunch and Elephants for Supper. After a pleasant walk in the forest, a little hare cheerfully arrived back at the cave where her den was hidden. I'll hop in, she thought happily, roast a few nuts for lunch and have a peaceful nap. There's the cave. She was about to enter when a rustling sound inside the cave made her heart jump. Who is there? cried the hare. A monster, a monster, boomed a voice. I eat rhinos for lunch and elephants for supper. Come in if you dare. Yikes. The hare was terrified and ran away. Along the way, she met a fox and told him of the monster. I'll get him out for you, said the fox. You can't, shrieked the hare. He eats rhinos for lunch and elephants for supper. Come, I'll sink my teeth into him and drive him away, the fox boasted. What do you think? At the cave, the fox bared his teeth and barked, This is the home of my friend the hare. Come out, you bully of a monster, before I sink my teeth into your neck. I'm a monster, a monster, came the voice rocking the earth and echoing through the forest. I eat rhinos for lunch and elephants for supper. Come in if you dare. Ooh. The fox fled and the hare with the hare close behind him. By and by, they met a leopard and told him of the monster. Come, I'll drive him away for you, promised the leopard. Let's see. At the cave, the leopard bared his claws and growled, This is the home of my friend Hare. Come out, you brute of a monster, before I claw your eyes out. I'm a monster, a monster, rang the voice. I eat rhinos for lunch and elephants for dinner. Come in if you dare. The leopard went leaping away with the fox and the hare behind him. They didn't stop until they met a rhino. Leave him to me, mumbled the rhino when he heard about the monster. One poke with my horn and he'll be out in the bush. The rhino marched into the cave, marched up to the cave, followed by the leopard, the fox, and the hare. He snorted and pawed the ground with his massive feet. Before he could speak, however, out boomed the voice. And away thundered the rhino with the leopard, the fox, and the hare close behind. Along the way, they met an elephant and told him of the monster. Come follow me, bellowed the elephant. A good thrashing with my trunk ought to bounce him out. 
but his bellowing did no good and once again with the elephant in the lead they all stampeded away from the frightening voice in the cave as the animals went crashing through the forest the ground shook and woke up a little frog who came storming out of her hole she looks grumpy huh is the meaning of this she demanded angrily your foolish noise woke me up on hearing about the monster the little frog calmed down somewhat and thought for a moment then she said come i'll drive him out for you the animals stared at her you think a mouse can do it i mean you think a frog can do it you a frog will drive out the monster who eats rhinos for lunch and elephants for supper. If I'm to finish my nap, I'll have to, sighed the frog. Then, chewing on her pipe and swinging her walking stick, she led the way, cool and confident as can be. When she got to the cave, she said to the monster, This is the home of my great friend the hare. Come out, whoever you are, before I come in and get you. I'm a monster, a monster, came the reply. I eat rhinos for lunch and elephants for supper. Come in if you dare. What do you think she's going to do? I'm the great eater, the great eater, boomed the frog. I eat rhinos for breakfast and elephants for lunch and monsters for supper. I'm coming, I'm coming. Everything was silent. Then out of the dark crawled a tiny caterpillar, blinking his eyes and rubbing his ears. My word, he exclaimed in a small voice, what an echo there is in this cave. Hardly the place for to stay for a snooze. And to himself, he added, though I did try my best, with a mischievous wink, he merrily sauntered on his way. Did you expect that? <laughs> the animals looked at one another in disbelief. Then the hare hopped about and giggled. The fox danced around and cackled. The leopard leapt about and roared. The rhino bounded about and howled. And the elephant rolled around and laughed away. As for the brave little frog, she didn't so much as crack a smile. Come with me, she called after the caterpillar. I know just the place for, she turned and glowered at the laughing animals, an un uninterrupted afternoon nap. Then swinging her walking stick and chewing on her pipe, she led the way, cool and confident as can be. The end. Did you expect that ending? Did you expect it would be a caterpillar? So silly. Well, that ending reminded me of a little poem you might know, and it's about a caterpillar named Arabella Miller. So we might as well do that poem as long as we're in the mood, right? For caterpillars, ready? Little Arabella Miller had a trusty caterpillar. First it crawled up on her mother then up on her baby brother and then her librarian little arabella miller put away your caterpillar did you remember that one <sighs> okay the next story is a story about a character that's popular in all many of the countries in africa it's about anansi who's a little bit of a trickster he uh, he's does naughty things, but he always cares about what's right. So see if you think that you agree with that he does the right thing here. Anansi and the Talking Melon, retold by Eric Kimmel and illustrated by Janet Stevens. And that is Anansi, a little mischievous spider. Here's the melon. One fine morning, Anansi the spider sat high in a thorn tree looking down into Elephant's garden. Elephant was, was uh, hoeing his melon patch. 
the ripe melons seem to call out to a Nazi, look how juicy and sweet we are. Come eat us. Mm, I like melon too. Anansi loved to eat melons, but he was much too lazy to grow them himself. So he sat up in the thorn tree watching and waiting while the sun rose high in the sky and the day grew warm. By the time noon came, it was too hot to work. Elephant put down his hoe and went inside his house to take a nap. Here was the moment Anansi was waiting for. He broke off a thorn and dropped down into the melon patch. He used the thorn to bore a hole in the biggest, ripest melon. Anansi squeezed inside and started eating. He ate and ate until he was as round as a berry. I'm full, Anansi said at last. Elephant will be coming back soon. It's time to go. So he's inside the melon now. But when he tried to squeeze through the hole, Anansi had a surprise. He didn't fit. The hole was big enough for a thin spider, but much too small for a fat one. I'm stuck, in it, Anansi cried. I can't get out. I will have to wait until I am thin again. Anansi sat down on a pile of melon seeds and waited to get thin. Time passed slowly. I'm bored, Anansi said. I wish I had something to do. Just then he heard Elephant returning to the garden. Anansi had an idea. When Elephant gets closer, I will say something. Elephant will think the melon is talking. What fun. Elephant walked over to the melon patch. Look at this fine melon. How big and ripe it is, he said, picking it up. He doesn't know that Anansi's inside. Ouch, cried Anansi. Elephant jumped. Ah, who said that? I did. The melon, Anansi said. I didn't know melons could talk, said Elephant. Of course we do. We talk all the time. The trouble is you never listen. I can't believe my ears, Elephant exclaimed. A talking melon. Who could believe it? I must show it to the king. Elephant ran down the road, carrying the melon with the Anansi inside. Along the way, he ran into Hippo. Where are you going with that melon? Hippo asked. I'm taking it to the king, Elephant said. What for? The king has hundreds of melons. He doesn't have one like this, Elephant said. This is a talking melon. Hippo didn't believe Elephant. A talking melon? What an idea. That's as ridiculous as a skinny hippo, the melon said. Hippo got so angry, his face turned red. Who said that? Did you say that, Elephant? It wasn't me. It was the melon, Elephant said. I told you it talks. Do you believe me now? I do, Hippo exclaimed. I want to go with you. I want to hear what the king says when you show him this talking melon. Come along then, said Elephant. So Elephant and Hippo went down the road together carrying the melon. By and by they ran into Warthog. Where are you going taking that melon? Wanted Warthog, Warthog asked them. We're taking it to the king, Elephant and Hippo told him. What for? The king has hundreds of melons, Warthog said. He doesn't have one like this, Hippo replied. This melon talks. I heard it. Warthog started to laugh. A, a talking melon? Why, that's as ridiculous as... A handsome Warthog, said the melon. Warthog got so angry he shook all over. Who said that? Did you say that, Elephant? Did you say that, Hippo? 
Of course not, Hippo and Elephant told him. The melon talks. Do you believe us now? I do, said Warthog, but let me go with you. I want to see what the king does when you show him this talking melon. So Warthog, Elephant, and Hippo went down the road together carrying the melon. Along the way, they met Ostrich, Rhino, and Turtle. They didn't believe the melon could talk either until they heard it for themselves. Then they wanted to come along too. The animals came before the king. Elephant bowed low as he placed the melon at the king's feet. The king looked down. Why did you bring me a melon? He asked Elephant. I have hundreds of melons growing in my garden. You don't have one like this, Elephant said. This melon talks. A talking melon. I don't believe it. Say something, melon. The king prodded the melon with his foot. The melon said nothing. Melon, the king said in a slightly louder voice, there is no reason to be shy. Say whatever you like. I only want to hear you talk. The melon still said nothing. The king grew impatient. Melon, if you can talk, I want you to say something. I command you to speak. The melon did not make a sound. The king gave up. Oh, this is a stupid melon, he said. Just then the melon spoke. Stupid am I? Why do you say that? I'm not the one who talks to melons. The animals had never seen the king, king so angry. How dare this melon insult me, he shouted. The king picked up the melon and hurled it as far as he could. The melon bounced and rolled all the way to Elephant's house. It smacked into the thorn tree and burst into pieces. Anansi picked himself up from among the bits of melon rind. All the excitement had made him thin, and now that he was thin again, he was hungry. Anansi climbed the banana tree. He settled himself in the middle of a big bunch of bananas and started eating. Elephant returned. He went straight to the melon patch. You melons got me in trouble with the king, Elephant said. From now on, you can talk all you like. I'm not going to listen to a word you say. Good for you, Elephant, Anansi called from the bananas. We bananas should have warned you. Talking to melons are nothing but trouble. The end. Well, those are two fun folk tales from African countries. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, there, we have lots of folk tales at the Fox and Robbins libraries, and I'll hope you'll come see them. Okay, bye everybody.